Hey Charcoal Gang, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So I'm clearly not in my normal place where I make videos for you guys. I am on a little like work from home vacation-ish trip in upstate New York in this really beautiful home. Um, but I still wanted to bring a video to you guys. So today's video is going to be 10 random tips that will totally change your fitness. Yes, I was inspired to make this video because I have a bunch of, a bunch of like random things that I've just, found myself repeating over the years over and over and over again in my DMs and when I meet people um, as far as tips and frequently asked questions that are going to actually impact your results in the gym um, and impact your ability to build muscle and do things with proper form and lose fat and all that stuff. They're like quick little things that you can implement and they're very like action based. This isn't gonna be like a woo woo video where we talk about how you can't get quick results. Like that's for another time. This is like stuff that every, you know, you would ask a trainer and they'd give you a definitive answer on. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, in no particular order, like I said, we're gonna start with shoes in the gym. You guys ask me all the time, what shoes should I wear in the gym? And I also see, this is like the most common thing I see in the gym, people wearing running shoes while deadlifting, squatting, doing any type of lift. Running shoes have padding in the heel, which tip you forward onto more of the front side of your body. So when you do something like a squat in running shoes, you're tipped forward, leaning forward a bit. This is gonna put more emphasis on your quads and the front side of your body. Whereas we really also wanna be engaging your posterior chain, which are your glutes and muscles in your back and backside of your body, hamstrings, that type of thing. So to get the most out of your workouts in the gym, make sure that you invest in a flat pair of shoes on the athletic pricier side of things, you'll look at a Nike Metcon. This is what I train in and I like the Flyknit specifically. And if you're looking for a cheaper version, lots of people lift in Converse's because they're flat. That's why you see that on Instagram and stuff because Converse's are super flat. You get nice contact with the ground. Heels can be flush with the ground. Um, the other third option, this is the cheapest option, the easiest option, I do this all the time is just take your shoes off. You can do uh, your squats and your deadlifts barefoot. You'll have better contact, you'll have better connection and en engagement in your glutes and hamstrings. Especially if I'm traveling, I only pack one pair of sneakers, my running shoes. And then when I go to the gym, I just take my shoes off for those while I'm doing those lifts. So that's number one. Okay, tip number two that is very helpful. Take videos of you performing exercises so that you can look at your form. You don't take them so that you can like really hate on yourself or be hard on yourself. You just take them to say, what do I look like when I'm doing this in terms of proper form? It doesn't matter what you look like while you're doing it, just proper form. I do this all the time. You guys follow me on, you guys that follow me on Instagram, I should say you see that I record all my video, my workouts, I post them on Instagram. And I also learn things from this on a daily basis. This is a lifelong learning process. You're never gonna get to the point where you just like master your health and fitness and you're done. You're always gonna be learning and growing. So taking videos of yourself can give you an outside perspective. You can look at your form, you can compare it to proper form videos, such as if you're in the Petite Power Program, which is our 12 week transformation program for petite women. One of the homeworks in the first week is to take a video of yourself. We can provide you feedback and then you can see yourself doing the exercise and learn from that. Super great tip. Next tip is where to start with weights. If you're a completely untrained individual or you have no experience lifting weights whatsoever, you can start with a pair of five to 10 pound dumbbells. Five would be for upper body, 10 would be for lower body. This is just a good tip to know. A lot of people are like, well, where do I even start? Do I like grab these 20s or do I need three pound weights? Start with a five and a 10 pair, somewhere in between that. And if it's too easy, you can go up. Which leads me to my next tip. How often do I increase, you know, when do I know to increase my weights? Get this question all the time. You want to increase your weights whenever you can really because you wanna use progressive overload. This is the, the strategy, the principle that's going to allow you to build muscle over time. You need to be increasing your weights incrementally over time to put on that muscle. So whenever you feel like an exercise has gotten easy, like you can get through all the reps and your it's really not challenging, your exertion is not high, then you should increase the weights about, uh, for lower body, it can be, it depends where you are, but it can be anywhere from five to 10 pounds. For upper body, it's probably gonna be more like two to five pounds. So we're just weaker in our upper body. Obviously there's less muscles in our upper body than our lower body. Ideally, the last 
two reps of any exercise should be super challenging, but you're able to do it with proper form. So if you don't fit that criteria, increase your weights. Okay, what do you do if you can't do an exercise that's on the program you're following or you can't do one you see on Instagram? This is what you do. Google, open up your phone and Google the name of the exercise plus the word regression. For example, if I can't do a pull up, then I'm gonna go to my phone, I'm gonna Google pull up regression. That is just a fancy PT word, personal trainer word, for an exercise that is a step down or a few steps down from that current difficulty level. Yes, so just make sure you use the most of Google, Google exercise regressions. It's literally a fancy word for just easier exercises and you can do those easier exercises. They will help you build strength to get up to that ultimately the exercise that you wanna be doing. Tip number six is to invest in a foam roller. I can't emphasize this enough. I see so many people warming up incorrectly in the gym, doing static stretches before they get into it. That's another tip, but buy a foam roller, not the one with the scary intimidating spikes, just a nice, approachable foam roller. You can check out the Smalletics Amazon shop linked below if you wanna see what I recommend. And get in the habit of foam rolling out your entire body before you start a workout. I have videos on foam rolling as well that you can watch here. And um, it's going to help prime your body to work out. And not only that, it also helps with recovery. It helps with, uh, it helps with so much. Basically, it, in it increases the extensibility of your muscle fibers. It reduces injury. It improves recovery. It does a lot. So make sure that you invest in one. They're like 10 bucks, so worth it. And you can use it after you work out as well to help with any on uh, delayed onset muscle soreness. That's that soreness that you get from working out. Make sure you warm up properly. Don't just go into the gym. Don't be that person who just comes in the gym and picks up dumbbells and starts like curling, okay? like. Do, do a dynamic warm up. You wanna do dynamic things to get your body primed and ready to go. A dynamic warm up would be active stretches. These are uh, stretches that bring you through a range of motion. They're usually in motion. So a static stretch could be, you know, if I stood up right now and I did um, like a, I did a knee to chest hold and I stretched my glutes and my hamstrings, but to make it dynamic, I might do it walking. So I'd switch legs walking. You want to make it dynamic. You wanna make it active and start to mimic some of the movement patterns that you're going to do in your actual workout. So if you're gonna be doing a barbell squat or a dumbbell squat in your workout, make sure you warm up your squat, train that movement pattern with no weight, just body weight in the dynamic warm up. And that leads me to my next tip, which is save your static stretching for after the workout. This is when it's gonna be the most effective for you. And it's not, it doesn't belong before the workout. Studies have shown that if you do static stretching where you hold a stretch for a certain amount of time before the workout, it actually can just stretch out the muscles a bit too much. It doesn't get you ready to lift. It's not helpful. It also doesn't help with the snap back effect, like with power. So if you're gonna do a jump, like a long jump, and you do a static stretch before that, you'll have less output than if you did dynamic warmups for that because your muscles are more lengthened. Save the static stretching for after, and don't skip the cool down. Make sure you do those static stretches. And I recommend holding those stretches for a minimum of 30 to 45 seconds on each side. Okay, tip number eight is something I didn't learn until very late in my fitness journey, like in the last year. So this is maybe, I don't know, more advanced. Okay, so first of all, it's about progress photos. If you don't take them, start taking them. If you already take them, I have a little tip for you. Progress photos are not meant to be a time where you take a photo of yourself and then you scrutinize it and compare it to previous photos and pick out little parts of yourself. They're actually meant to be a process tool, something you do regularly just to keep your head in the game, to know that you're working on goals. It's not meant to be a thing where you have to check in and weigh in and it's a do or die thing, it's critical. It's meant to be a process related um, Thing that you do that keeps you, like I said, keeps your head in the game, keeps you focused, keeps you excited. So that being said, your progress photos don't need to be so serious, you guys. You don't have to stand there like this and like <laughs> relax your belly and like well, let your belly like spill out. That's what I did in my very, very first progress photos because I just thought I needed to look as like relaxed and whatever as possible. Like treat my body like it was like, I don't know, an inanimate object and just stand there. In the last couple of years, or last year and a half, I've started having a lot of fun with my progress photos. Do poses, like nobody's, nobody cares, nobody's watching you. Do poses, play around with it, work on your confidence, work on taking photos of yourself, looking in the mirror. There's really no 
thing there's nothing to be ashamed of here and it you're gonna be so glad you have these photos later so just make sure that you lighten up a bit the progress photos are not meant to be a scary intimidating cr critical thing they're meant to be fun lighten up put on something you feel good in and try different poses that you feel confident and strong and powerful doing okay tip number nine is like if you're just getting into fitness please just Take all of the crap that you see about BCAAs and how long should I eat a meal after a workout and how much um, like should I have pre-workout? Like take all of these questions and just like put them to the side for a bit. These are not the major drivers of your fat loss or muscle gaining progress, AKA body re recomposition, what we teach on this channel for petite women. These are minors. You don't want to major in the minors. You're going to spin your wheels, get frustrated, never get results and then quit. Okay. I know this because I've coached literally thousands of petite women. Do not focus on the minors. Do not major in them. Do not get caught up in the meal timing and the BCAAs and the supplements. Go to the gym lift heavy for you eat protein fats and fibrous carbs in every single meal stay hydrated focus on your sleep major in the majors like tackle the things that are going to have the biggest impact on your metabolism early on and if you ever decide to take it to the you know the most elite level of fitness then you can worry about stuff like creatine but where you are now it's not going to make a difference there is no shortcut you just need to do the strength training and eat, you know, make better choices about your food, maybe eat more depending on where you're starting out. Okay. The last kind of random tip here is I get so many comments about knee pain, especially with lunges and squats. Now lunges and squats are not bad for your knees. I could probably make an entire video on this, um, just about knees. But the main thing I want to convey to you is if you have knee pain, when you're doing exercise, I want you to get really real with yourself and understand the difference between discomfort and pain because discomfort and exercise is to be expected. You are not going to be in your comfort zone the first time you try anything, right? The first time you try to uh, try any new skill, cooking, anything, writing, it's not going to be comfortable yet. So how can you expect anything in the gym to be comfortable, especially with some of the added sort of stressors of people there and people in your environment and the unknown. So, so just know that you're doing this to get out of your comfort zone, to grow as a person, to step out of that safe space. But of course you still want to be lifting in a safe way with proper form. The way that you know you're lifting with improper form is you do have pain. That's probably one of the surest signs that you have uh, improper form when you're performing an exercise. But if you just have discomfort in your knees, it's probably okay to proceed and your knees are going to get stronger. The lunges, the squats, it might be a little uncomfortable. It might feel weird. There might be some clicking at first, but as you go through something, as you stay consistent and, and keep practicing these movement patterns, all of the muscles that surround the joint are going to strengthen and it's going to get less and less discomfortable, discomfortable, nice April, <laughs> uncomfortable to the point where it totally disappears. I cannot tell you guys how many times in the petite power program, our clients have posted long things about their knees just being bad and they can't lunge. I coached them through that. We do form checks with videos. Now they're doing lunges with zero pain. They're lifting heavy. They're doing, you know, they're doing all of the things and they're feeling capable and they have no pain or discomfort. And that might take a few months, right? You're, you're going to need to build up that strength in your knee joint, in your quads, in the uh, muscles in your legs and your core and everything, but it's so worth it. Cause then you can go and live your life without pain or fear that you're going to like twist your knee or do something weird. So just know discomfort when it comes to knee pain. Okay. Pain, not okay. At that point, go to a physical therapist and talk to them and get a rehabilitation program, get a diagnosis, figure out what's going on there. All right, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed these 10 random tips to level up your fitness. Let me know which one was like the, the most interesting or helpful to you in the comments below. And please give this video a like to support my channel. It's a free and easy way to support the short girl gang. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you're a petite woman, subscribe, join the short girl gang. We are a group of women who are interested in health and feeling good and powerful in our smaller frames. And if you don't know who I am, you, probably, you just watched this video. I am a certified personal trainer. I am a certified nutritionist 
and I specialize in petite women's health and I run a program online, we've been doing it for years now, that helps petite women transform their bodies and their minds and get stronger. If you have any interest in learning more about that, you can look at the link in the description below and also you can book a call with me if you wanna get on the phone and just chat. We just chat, it's not a pressure situation. I just learn more about you and we figure out if we can help you and if we can't, we point you in the right direction. So definitely book a call if you wanna chat with me. It really will be me on the phone. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys love this video and have a great rest of your day. Bye.